Hi, welcome to Eyes to Heaven. I'm Jen. So today I wanted to talk about fear, um, but I have some other things that I want to address today that are more pressing and more, uh, yeah, just more pressing. My most recent video was on the Sabbath. And so I explained kind of this little brochure that I wrote about the Sabbath. And that was because God spoke to me um, about the Sabbath and he was reiterating some of the things he's told me before. And so I felt, you know, this is probably something I should address now. <clears throat> this light is freaking out. I'm sorry. Hold on. So I, I thought this is probably something that I need to be addressing now. I'm so sorry for my light. So God spoke to me and he said, um, he said that everybody needs to be doing the Sabbath. And he said things along these lines before. And what I've done with my videos is I've just put them in their own video and then not really talked about them. Because I didn't think I would have to. Like, I, I thought, you know, you know, the right people will get there and I don't need to interpret or say anything about this. That's true to a degree. Like I said before, I think he's letting me talk about some stuff that he's shown me. So that's that's what I did. That's what I did. I ran and I did my Sabbath video. Um, but given the circumstances of um, everything that's going on in the world and the last time he used the language that he used, um, I wanted to bring this up and actually read it for you um <laughs> so i spoke in the other video about sabbath about how it's really heavy on god's heart and um one of the first things god said to me in a capacity where he wanted me to tell other people things um it was january 2020 so it was um, right before COVID crisis and, um, he told me he's going to pluck the people out of the dead places. And I've said this before, you can go back and watch my very first video that I posted. It's on this, uh, this word that he gave me to say, um, and he used very specific language. He said he was going to pluck people off and, um, he was going to keep plucking them off until they died and were consumed and so like I said before I didn't really think anything of it and so all of this to say that he used the same kind of language in this thing about the Sabbath there was just a lot of gravity in this there was a lot of gravity in this so this is to Laodicea and he said thus saith the Lord I know your works that you are neither cold nor hot that you don't lie down in green pastures, that you are neither cold nor hot. He reiterates, he says it again. Um, he said, behold, I will pluck you off. I will not stop until you are consumed. Lie down in search of me and I will give you rest. Otherwise, I will render to you death. Seek the Lord, all ye who labor and are heavy laden. For you will find rest in me. My yoke is light. Okay. So I'll put that on the screen. And I will put that down in the description. Everybody needs to be listening to this. This is why. Look. Sabbath is a big deal. And people that tell you not to do Sabbath. Um, are false prophets. And you need to stop listening to these people. That tell you that you can do whatever you, you want to do. And God is still going to save you. Because that's a lie. So, in any case, <laughs> I came here, I wanted to talk about fear, but I realized that I really, like, this is what we should be fearing. And so I'm going to segue, I'm going to segue into this. We should be fearing God. You should not be worried about what man can do to you, but what God can do to you, I mean, that's evident now. Um... Because he can thrust you into these things that are just awful um, that we have going on right now. But um, you need to be worried about what God can do to you if you don't listen to him. 
And so I've got some verses that I pulled out here. God says, um, Fear not, O land, be glad and rejoice, for the Lord will do great things. So number one thing is, is if you are God's child, if you are obeying his commandments, if you are doing what you're supposed to be doing, you don't have to worry about it. You don't have to worry about it. If you're not and you're just completely entrenched in the system and you don't know how to use critical thinking skills and you rely on things you, solely on things you read, um, you're going to have a bad time. <laughs> so, you know, we, we should know that God is going to take care of us. He is going to take care of his people. That's all throughout scripture. He's not going to throw you to the wolves as long as you're doing what you're supposed to be doing and you listen when people tell you that you need to be doing the commandments and stuff. Um, also, I know there's like a lot of political unrest. We got a lot of stuff going on in the world and I just want to remind people that um, we should not be worrying about what's happening politically. And I know that sounds crazy, but we should not be worried about it. God's going to take care of us. We are children of God first before we are citizens of any country or a, a color or a sex, right? We are God's children first. And so, you know, God has us set apart in a way, you know, we're, we're his special people and we're going to go, we're part of his inheritance. And Isaiah here is talking about... How God told Isaiah not to be worrying about political stuff, okay? For the Lord spake thus to me with a strong hand and instructed me that I should not walk in the way of this people, saying, Say you not a confederacy to all them to whom this people shall say a confederacy, neither fear ye their fear, nor be afraid. Sanctify the Lord of hosts himself, and let him be your fear, and let him be your dread. And he shall be for a sanctuary, but for a stone of stumbling and for a rock of offense to both the houses of Israel, for a gin and for a snare to the inhabitants of Jerusalem. And many among them shall stumble and fall and be broken and be snared and be taken. Bind up the testimony, seal the law among my disciples. So God is telling you not to worry about what's going on in the world. Um, you need to be worrying about what God wants you to do, which is the law, seal up the law, do the law, right? All right. And um, we also know that God, God judges nations and he judges people. And um, God is the one in control. He's the one in control. That's why he's the one that you need to fear. Okay. And he tells us through David in Psalm 9. The Lord is known by the judgment which he executed. The wicked is snared in the work of his own hands. Higian Salah. The wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. Uh, for the needy shall not always be forgotten. The expectation of the poor shall not perish forever. Arise, O Lord, let not man prevail. Let the heathen be judged in thy sight. Put them in fear, O Lord, that the nations may know themselves to be but men. Salah. So, God puts people in judgment. Part of the reason he does that is to let them know that he is God, right? And so, if we're looking that way, we already know that. And we don't have to seek that judgment, you know? We don't have to worry about that judgment. So, God already told you not to be afraid. He told you in Joshua 1.9. And that harkens back to Deuteronomy 31.6, right? Have I not commanded you, be strong and of good courage? For the Lord God is with you wherever you go. And that's true. And although Joshua was running off into battle, and this is what Moses told Joshua before he was going off into battle, we are in a battle all the time. You know, we're in a battle every day, and we should not be scared every day. If we're doing what we're supposed to do, you have no need to be scared because God is with you, right? I also wanted to point out that being fearful um, is failing in your faith. And it's not good to be fearful. Revelation 21 is where 
John is seeing a new heaven and a new earth, and God is telling him that this is the end, it is done, and he says, He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. He's saying that people that are scared, people that are scared of worldly things, because fearing him is good, but people that are scared and don't have faith, they are unbelieving, you know, they don't have faith that God's going to take care of them because they're not doing the right thing. They are lumped in with the abominable, the murderers, the whoremongers, the sorcerers, the idolaters, and all liars. You can't be afraid. You can't be afraid. You have to listen to what God commanded, okay? Don't be afraid and do the commandments. You'll be fine. The whole gist of this is you do what God tells you to do. You have no reason to fear. And that's the commandments. That's, I mean, that's Sabbath. Um, so Psalm 25, 14 says that the secret of the Lord is with them that fear him. He will show them his covenant. So if you fear the Lord, he's going to lead you to the covenant anyway. And that just helps you fear him more, really. I mean, that's enlightening your eyes and seeing more of what most people don't see now. And then, um, Psalm 34, 7, the angel of the Lord encamps round about them that fear him and delivereth them. You know, we can see that in Daniel and how he was saved out of the lion's den, how uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were saved, right? There was the angel of the Lord there, right? And he saved them all because they, they were more afraid of God. So all of this harkens back to the very beginning where I talked about what God said to Laodicea. So what does God say to the Laodiceans? And to the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things say at the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou went cold or wert cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Because thou sayest, I am rich and increase with goods and have need of nothing. And knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thine eyes with eye salve, that thou mayest see. Okay, so he's saying, right, that, that passage in Psalm about David, um, and I'll put it on the screen because I don't remember the exact verse, but the commandments purify your eyes. They enlighten the eyes, right? They are the eye salve. Um, he goes on to say in verse 19, As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come unto him and will sup with him and he with me. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I overcame and am set down with my father in his throne. Okay, so... He's saying, when he addresses Laodicea this way, um, that you need to be doing the commandments. And that's twice. That's what he said to me. That's what he said in Revelation. You need to be doing the commandments. And anyone that tells you otherwise is a false prophet. 